I wouldn't even bring it up. <laughs> yeah, so I've been I've been experimenting with Bitcoin mining. Just because I find it fascinating, and um, uh, out of curiosity, uh, in here, who knows the difference between a CPU and a GPU? Two and a half people, three people. Okay, well here I'll turn it into a, a, a little mini lesson, then we'll do the homework assignment. Um, it's actually pretty interesting. Um, let me open up Keynote here. And we can actually just use this slide. I won't put it in our slide set. So I talked about it as in terms of compilers yesterday. It's okay, so, it's not even our slide. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's this is the compiler slide, but it's that's fine. Well, so anyways, you know, we have these things called bitcoins, which is a cryptocurrency. It's a fake, fake currency, if you will. Well, in any case, uh, it's all based on encryption stuff, and every single transaction that happens on the um, between bitcoins, if somebody buys a pair of shoes with bitcoins, somebody needs to um, process that transaction. And there's no centralized bank or anything for Bitcoin, so it's the internet that is processing that transaction. And that comes in the form of um, people like me who are running the, the Bitcoin mining software stuff to govern these transactions. That's the kind of the, the, the short version of this. Well, in the early days, you would use your computer's CPU to do this. So, for instance... Um, I asked this question yesterday in one of my classes. Uh, how many of you think you have uh, a pretty good video game computer you've put together, like a gaming rig? Okay. Um, how many of you spent at least $500 in your graphics card? $600. $700. $800. You hear that? Sound? Okay. So, in any case, now, if you, have a, if, you, if you spend $700 on your graphics card, what you probably have is you probably have, uh, for your central CPU, an Intel Core i7 quad-core, right? That's your processor? Your central yeah, processor? 8-core. Oh, you're using AMD? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So, in any case, whatever. So, we can just use Intel as the example. So, this would be considered a pretty high-performance uh, CPU for your uh, computer. Now... Your CPU in your computer is a generalistic tool. So we'll connect it to what we're doing in here. We're writing code in Java. Java is a high-level language. When we compile it, compilation translates a high-level language into a low-level language, right? But what's a low-level language? It's a one-to-one -one relationship with the magic tricks that your CPU knows how to do. So your Intel Core i7, this is the CPU. So that guy knows how to do, let's say, 500 different things. So when you write one line of Java code, that line gets translated into a whole bunch of lines of uh, low-level language, like assembly language, and each one of those translates into one magic trick that the CPU knows how to do. So your CPU has, has a lot of talents in um, uh, Java, or a lot of, the CPU has a lot of talents, your core CPU. <coughs> well, to calculate these hashes for Bitcoins is just a bunch of floating point math. Okay, it's a whole bunch of math. Well, floating point math uh, is just one of the many, many, many things that your CPU knows how to do. Now, when you get to your graphics cards, you have something called a GPU. This is your graphic, graphics processing unit. Um, so how many cores do you think your graphics card has? You know, uh, well, here our Intel one has four cores. So would your guess be that your graphics card has kind of like the same, four cores, six cores, something like that. Well, a couple of years ago, they would have had 256 cores, 512 cores. Some of the newest cards have like 3,000 cores. 3,000 cores. Well, why, why don't I have 3,000 cores on my Intel chip? Well, each one of these cores is far more talented than each of the cores on your graphics card. The cores on your graphics card only know how to do floating point math. But it just so happens that the Bitcoin mining stuff deals with floating point math. So there's a technology called OpenCL that um, it was an open source technology that Apple kind of got behind about three years ago. And what they've done is they've built it into their operating systems and now Windows has as well, where they offload some of the stuff that your CPU used to do, math stuff, 
Now, that kind of stuff gets offloaded onto your graphics processor. So your computer immediately became higher performance because now your CPU is not busy doing stuff that it's not specialized for. It uses your graphics card for doing some of that. So in any case, in the early days of Bitcoin mining, people would use their CPU, which could do plenty of floating point math, but it couldn't do that much. So let's say your CPU can do, um, you know, let's say 10 uh, mega hashes a second. So that's 10 million hashes every one second. And a hash is an encryption thingy, okay? So let's just call it 10 million, 10 million math problems per second. Well, then we moved over to the GPU. So the GPU, um, let's say, can do on a, let's say an average, average GPU can do 150 million um, uh, hashes per second. You get into one of these $800 cards or something like that, you could probably do 700 or so hashes per second, 700 million hashes per second, 700, 700 mega hashes. So that's really high performance. Well, we have these things now called ASICs, which are even more specialized. So we keep going down to even more specialization. So your CPU is very general purpose. Your graphics card is specialized for graphics stuff, which deals with a lot of floating point math. Then you have these things called ASICs, which are specialized specifically for the math for mining uh, Bitcoins those hashing algorithms. So that's all it knows how to do is that kind of stuff. So these guys, you know, so for instance, I picked up a $22 uh, from uh, Amazon called AntMiner, and it was getting, it was advertised to get two giga hashes per second. So that's, you know, what? Two times a million hashes per second, right? So... Thousand million, yeah, hundred two time two thousand million hashes per second, a lot faster. So he's got this eight hundred dollar graphics card that can do seven hundred mega hashes. I can do basically three times that. Okay, with a twenty two dollar device plugged into a USB port. Okay, um, because this thing was created specifically for doing this mining stuff. Now, why do Bitcoin mining? Is because you get a cut of the pie, so you. You uh, get in with the, um, you know, some mining pool, which you and, you know, a thousand people who are all using their processing power to um, uh, mine Bitcoins. And then every single time they meet a threshold, 25 get Bitcoins get distributed to the pool. And then they distribute those Bitcoins across all the people in the pool based on the amount of work you did. So, you know, in one day, let's say... When I was doing uh, two giga hashes per second, I think I made something like uh, six cents <laughs> and probably used 30 cents in electricity. <laughs> so I lost 24 cents <laughs> doing, doing this. So uh, I would not view this as a get rich quick scheme uh, unless you're going to be uh, setting up a big operation of doing, you know, of a lot of these things all hacked together and keeping your power bill as low as possible. Then you can maybe make money off of it. But from an experimental perspective, uh, you can say you have Bitcoins, fractions and fractions and fractions of a Bitcoin. <laughs> so like I have 0. 0.0006 Bitcoins or something like that now. But a Bitcoin's worth 500 bucks. I have 0. 0.0006 of those. May even be more zeros than that. It's, it's, I don't have a lot of bitcoins, but in any case, so I'm kind of experimenting with these things. So I get this twenty-two dollar ant miner thing. I could do two giga hashes per second. Plug it into the USB port of my iMac, and the thing's supposed to be overclockable. So you know, it says it's overclockable. So I'm like, okay, well, it's going at two giga hashes per second. Let's 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 juice this a little bit. Okay, so um, I, have, I took a picture. Oh, man. <laughs> So when I woke up in the morning, here, what does that say? What's the speed? 3.04. 3.04 4 giga hashes per second. That's where it stopped. Um, so that was taken, uh, I don't know, maybe 3.15 in the morning or so. Um, about five minutes or so after the smoke alarms went off. <laughs> 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 so so I, I still, we still have the TV, a big screen TV in the, in the bedroom. My computer's right below that. So I, like, I sit at my computer and watch TV shows and code or whatever. So... Uh, um, so the TV screen was still on, 
So you saw the smoke billowing in front of the TV screen. It was a, it was a really nice, beautiful effect, actually. Um, now the funny thing is, is you know, since it's three in the morning, I was just I woke up, so from the you know alarm going off, so I'm kind of like in a mini panic or whatever. So I'm not totally totally with it. I see the smoke billowing, and, I, and right away I pretty much know what's what's kind of going down. So I decide, okay, well I, I gotta get this thing unplugged, right? I mean, it's like on fire. So what do I just reach back there and unplug it? This thing was hot. <laughs> that's that's going to be hot. Was that the uh, Bill Engvall? Here's your sign. You heard that guy? It's like, you know, you know, people should wear, people, stupid people should wear a sign saying, letting other people know they're stupid. You know, like, uh, I think one of the things he says is like, uh, yeah, a guy test drove my truck. And as soon as he got out, he reached down and grabbed the tail, grabbed the uh, exhaust pipe. He goes, dang, that's hot. It's like, like, you know, if you've been wearing your sign, I could have warned you. <laughs> it's going to be hot. So, <coughs> in any case, I burned the crap out of my hand, pulling a flaming uh, USB stick off the back of my iMac. It's a good thing I could return that to Amazon for a brand new one. <laughs> I'd probably not try to overclock it to death this time. No, I'll still do that. <laughs> Actually, I ordered five more. <laughs> so I have six of them now. Well, they're on the way. Five of them get delivered today. I still have to wait for the other one to be re you know, returned after, you know, it was defective, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so then I'm going to plug them all into this, this, the, this powered USB hub. I'm just going to stick this giant fan on it. <laughs> uh, you got to be careful with moisture with that, though. You got to do fish oil, then. Huh? Fish oil. What, dip it in fish oil? Is it a fish oil that you can, like, run it in and then we keep it? Well, that might be true. Uh, in the early days of, of uh, uh, computer cooling, people used to use liquid ether. It's an inert liquid, so you just dip their whole computer into a bucket of liquid ether and it would keep it cool. So you're going to, so I got to submerge this in fish oil? Wasn't that do you have a do you have a, a fish oil guy you work with? <laughs> well, you know, it's like some under market oh <laughs> this black this black market fish oil guy. <laughs> That's what the uh, the computers that are like the fish tanks are uh, submerged, aren't they? Mm. Could be. I mean, it sounds sounds reasonable. <laughs> some some guy comes to your house with a garbage bag and a ladle. <laughs> 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 Never trust a guy carrying a garbage bag and a ladle. He's probably selling fish oil. I wouldn't eat soup out of a garbage bag either. Although, maybe I would. That's probably pretty good soup. If a guy believes in his product enough to walk the streets with a garbage bag and a ladle, I think I would eat that soup. <laughs> in fact, I'm positive. I, I'd probably pay 20 bucks for that soup. Now that I'm kind of going down this... this this process. It's got to be good soup. Man, these jelly beans are terrible. Oh, it's like that putrid coffee I had that one time. You get one of these uh, 180-day attachments. Oh, so speaking of that, so I was bidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, you didn't tell you what? Five, got. No, no, no. So I didn't tell you what else I got. <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of experimenting here. So I got, I got so I'm going to have six total of these these three giga hash things with with fan. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> and that was on eBay, and I I was bidding on a uh, 300 giga hash thing from uh, Butterfly Labs. Totally won that. Man, it's like a seventeen hundred dollar thing, and I, I want it for less than that. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, then there's also there's there's cloud mining places. So if you don't want to have to run your own equipment, you can go to a place and you can pay them for a, a fraction of their. So they're running some giant, you know, giant warehouse filled with these things and probably a bunch of fans. Um, or dudes squirting fish oil on it, I guess. <laughs> little guy, I got the ladle guy. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I, I bought eight giga hashes per second there for an experiment. 
So I bought a one-year contract for that. Oh, that was only like 100 bucks for 8 gig of hashes, and you don't have to worry about the hardware or the power bill or anything. So, I don't know, it's an interesting, interesting experiment. So I'm hoping to burn down my house. <laughs> Seems like you're on track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've only been doing this two days. I've already started a fire in the bedroom. So. Oh, I hope so. They usually give a range. It's like 300 to 328. I wonder where they got the 328 from. People like you. What is this thing? It's a peep. I, I think say, it's a peep. It's a really so hard nice. peep. It <laughs> 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 sounds like that when you put it down. <laughs> well, you should. And I threw it on top of jelly beans. Should have had a nice soft landing. <laughs> 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 and waste not what not ah that thing has a jawbreaker core okay so in any case interesting stuff so homework assignment what were you supposed to do Got it. Okay. So we have our driver. Right now we're just creating a cave. What's a cave? A cave generates an entrance, which then grows our um, uh, grows our cave. Then we print out the number of rooms in the cave as well as the number of bitcoins. Then we enter the first room. So we enter the cave entrance. So inside room, we have something here called enter. And um, uh, enter displays all the crap in the room, and then at the very end, it prompts them for something. What does prompt do? Prompt creates your scanner, asks them what they would like to do, reads in the answer, and then um, spits. So actually, what am I doing? I'm getting the next room and entering it. Okay, so what you should be able to do for your homework is you should be able to traverse through the cave, which we can already do, but you should be collecting treasure on the way. So every time you enter a room that has a treasure, you pick it up and you get a point. Got a treasure. Okay, but that treasure should get removed from the room. Um, now, uh, do you have to be able to go back to the beginning for the homework? Or is it just... Okay, so you have to be able to quit at any point in time and it should say how many treasures you picked up. Okay, got it. So, when we enter a room, we need to find out if there's a treasure in that room. So, right off the bat, let's find out, is there a treasure? Well, how do we ask that? Treasure is a Bitcoin. We're mining Bitcoins by cave crawling. Way faster than ASICs. This will be easily uh, three, four hundred micro hashes per year. So, <laughs> okay. So we'll ask the question. I don't think we already did it, do we? Yeah. Oh, we did. Oh, we just spit it out. Okay, good. We need to keep track of it somewhere, then, right? And so you had like nothing to do for your homework. No. no. Okay. So. If it has a Bitcoin, I think half the class has got pissed at you. Like, five minutes? Spent six hours and didn't get it done. All right. So if the room has a Bitcoin, right now we're uh, displaying we have a Bitcoin. Otherwise, we display none. But if we have a Bitcoin, what do we want to do? We want to count it, that we collected it, right? And we can do that with our stats guy here. So num rooms and num treasure, those are the total number of rooms and total number of treasure that we have. So we're going to create another variable, private static int collected treasure. And we'll start that off at zero. And we'll create a little method called collect treasure. And this guy will set collected treasure to be one more than it used to be. All right, 
Then we'll also get a public static int get collected treasure. This guy will return collected treasure. Okay. Now, back in room, if we found a treasure, what are we going to do? We're going to say stats dot collect treasure, because we just found a treasure. But we then also need to remove the treasure from the room, which means what? This dot has Bitcoin is equal to false. No longer does this room have a treasure in it because we just picked it up. So that means if I ever enter this room again, right now we don't have a way of going back, but if I did ever enter this room again, the treasure would no longer be there. I've picked it up. Make sense? Okay. So that's what we do if a room has a Bitcoin. Now, when we finally hit quit, so we need to go back to our prompt, our prompt needs to support quitting. And what did I say? Press Q to quit. Okay. So... After we read in the answer here, we have read in either a exit number or Q. Oh, we'll do a lowercase Q. No, we'll do an uppercase Q. We'll do either a lowercase or an uppercase Q. <laughs> okay. So before I just go ahead and grab a room that's the parse int of answer, I need to see if they entered in a Q first. And we'll assume that they are putting in proper inputs. So uh, uh, we're only going to check to see if it's a lower or uppercase Q. If it's not one of those, we're going to assume it's a correct number. So if answer dot equals, actually here, I'll show you something new. Answer dot equals ignore case. So there's an equals, there's a comparison method for strings that allows you to ignore case. So if it's equal to a Q in upper or lower case, then what are we going to do? We're going to quit. And when we quit, what happens? We should display the number of treasure collected. Right? Game over, collected, stats dot get collected treasure. Bitcoins. So that'll be your output. Okay, then what will we do? Well, we don't actually have to do anything. The game will just end. But if you want to be explicit about that, you can say return. So return will make this method immediately end. System.exit will work as well. But we'll say return. This guy technically returns nothing. So this says Make this method end, but don't actually return a value. Usually we're returning, you know, a value, like return answer or something like that. But this guy expects us to return void. But that means we are allowed to return, which will make this method immediately end. And when this method immediately ends, the enter method will immediately end, because that's the last thing that's in there. So by not going into another room, we will be done traversing our cave. Okay. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and enter the room. We don't need to put this inside of an else. Why? Because if we're still kicking here, that means we did not return here. Does that make sense? This would have killed off the method right here. So we wouldn't have gotten to this line. So if we're still here, we did not get into this if statement. You would have needed it if you didn't put it in. Correct. I would have needed the else. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we give them obvious exits, right? So we're going to give them a little, we're going to say press Q to quit as part of the prompt. All right, we'll go ahead and run this. 
Number of rooms, 22. Number of bitcoins, 15. Awesome. So we're going to go to exit zero. Ah, oh, we found a bitcoin. So we, we took it. Go to exit zero. Go to exit zero. All right, we're done. We're at the end of the road. We can't go anywhere. But we did find that last Bitcoin, so I'm going to hit Q to quit. And it says, game over. I collected two Bitcoins out of 15. $1, it is $1,000. Just by walking through that cave. Actually, interestingly enough, given the amount of time that took us, I wonder if this was real. How many... <laughs> How many like exa hashes we just were doing? <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous amount of hashing speed we were just doing to collect two bitcoins in like 15 seconds. Did you ever clock that? Like seriously, my fingers are burning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so does that solve the homework? Hey, did everybody get that done? Ish. Done ish. All right. Man, these things are. What flavor is that going to be? Huh? Nothing. Like kiwi almond? Sure. There's a. Watermelon lemonade. Did you see the lighter colors are the more tasty? Once you get to the greens, it just gets weird. I don't know what that is. It might be nothing. <laughs> no flavor. Okay, so questions about that. Now, what we would like to do is we probably want to be able to go through our cave multiple times and keep finding more Bitcoins using our memory, right? So maybe another option we have here at the end is instead of hitting Q to quit, maybe we hit a B to go back to the beginning. Okay, so we'll add something to our press Q to quit. or B to return, or here, B for cave entrance. Okay, so we want to get back to the cave entrance. So we'll go ahead and put in uh, our else if here, answer dot equals ignore case a b go back to the cave entrance that's what we'll do here now we have to figure out how to do that so let me open up our um, so this is 250 right Okay, so this might be what our cave currently looks like. If we are right here, we hit a dead end, let's say, but we haven't collected all of our coins. So, because we can, you know, I think, what did I say, the red ones have coins? So if we're down here, we haven't collected all of our coins yet. We want to be able to go back, start at the beginning, and take a different path. So obviously, if I got down here, that means I went this direction from the beginning, then this direction, then this direction, then this direction. So there's several rooms I have not visited yet. So I would want to go back to the beginning and collect this coin. Then I want to go back to the beginning, go here, then collect this coin. Go back to the beginning, go here, go here, go here, collect this coin. Now I should have all the coins. That makes sense? So if I'm in this room right here and I have pressed B to go back to the beginning, how do I get back to the beginning? There's a couple of people I will not let answer this question. So how would we get back to the beginning? This whole thing's a cave, correct? So here, let me, uh, let's, let's draw our cave in here. Change the color of this, obviously. So here, their cave is green, right? It's obviously, it's got kind of moss covered and Okay, so that's our cave. All right. Th 
this cave has a single pointer. We have something called entrance. An entrance points to the very top of our tree. This guy right here. Now, if I'm in this room, who knows about this room in terms of this picture right here? How do I get, who, how did I get to this room? From this room. The only guy that knows about this room is that guy. Does this guy know about this room? As we currently have it written, here's room. Rooms have a name, they know about their exits, they know whether they have treasure. Do they know about the their parent, who they just came from? Rooms don't. So this room does not know about this room, but this room knows about this room. So if I'm in this room, the only guy that even knows about me is the guy right before me, and I can't talk to him. But ultimately, I don't want to get here. Ultimately, I want to get up here. Who knows about him? Who knows about the cave entrance? The cave. The cave has a pointer called entrance, which points to the beginning of the cave. So the only guy that knows how to get to the beginning of the cave is cave. Right? Okay. So, I'm in this room. I just typed in B. I need to get to the beginning of the cave. How do we need to change our program in order for that to be a possibility? Who knows about the cave entrance? One guy knows about the cave entrance. That's cave. Go ahead. Ready to get her for the entrance. Okay. We'll go and do that, and then you can fumble over the next part. So we made our entrance private, right? So he wants to create a getter for that. Public room get entrance and have this guy return this dot the entrance. Right? Okay. Yeah, so now our, our cave can can hand out the entrance. But we got an issue. Where's my color? Oh there. Here's my, this is my coloring book. I wonder if I can light a coloring book on fire with a Bitcoin hashing thing. It could be my heat sink thing, just wrap it. This thing had a heat sink on it too, like it was meant to dissipate heat. That's how much I overclocked it. It was awesome. What am I doing? Oh. So I'm right here. I need to get to here. We just gave the cave the ability to expose this to us. Does this guy know about the cave? What does this guy know about? Exits, treasure. And Name, exits, and treasure. And this particular guy doesn't even have any exits. He's very lonely. And this guy doesn't even have treasure. He's blue, right? We said the red ones have treasure. When I originally drew this in my coloring book. Okay, so this guy is a room with a generic name, just like every other room, where we just say a room, has no treasure and no exits. This is the most pathetic room ever. <laughs> okay, he knows nothing. So how do we get back up here? How would you modify our code to get back up here? Now Amish told us, like, oh, well, this is easy. We just come into cave, and we expose the entrance variable to it, but we have an issue. If I'm here, I don't know about the cave. Yes, I'm in the cave, but even the cave doesn't know about me. The cave knows about this guy, that knows about this guy, who knows about this guy, who knows about this guy, who knows about me. <laughs> that makes sense? So if I'm this blue guy here, and I want to get back up here, how can we modify our program to let us do that? I'll let you do it the hard way first, and then I'll show you the easy way. Naturally. 
Although I've already given you a really strong hint to the easy way, which is why I said I would only let certain people answer this, because if I go down the wrong path, the right path, don't throw off the example. <coughs> what was that flavor? It was terrible. Huh? Yes, you see my jaw dislocate. <laughs> I heard she knows about a good hospital. We'll be fine. I mean, they must care about their patients. They wouldn't even let her go get pancakes. <laughs> well, actually, Concordia did provide that. I got picked that up from the cafeteria. Yeah. When I skipped chapel, I went there for after chapel coffee and candy and orange juice. Technicalities. Speaking of orange juice, orange juice is like the biggest ripoff at any restaurant. Never, never order orange juice at a restaurant. They charge like five dollars, five dollars for a stupid little glass of orange juice that you know, it's like a, a twelfth of the a bottle of orange juice that you can get for three bucks at the store. Remember that next time you're in a, you're, next time you're in a um, restaurant, you say, "Oh yeah, for breakfast I'll just have OJ." That OJ just costs as much as your omelet. So you get a, you know. An omelet and an OJ is 13 bucks. It was an $8 glass OJ. All right, so what am I going to do here? Besides not buy OJ at restaurants? I'm here. I know my name. I know my about my treasure. I know about my exits. Don't know about the cave. I need to get here. Cave doesn't know about me. I still need to get here. So if I'm here and I've been prompted and I type in B to go back to the beginning, how can we get here? What are we going to need to change in our program for us to get there? Well, there's a starting obvious point, right? Who knows about this room right here? There's only one guy. The cave. So, in order to get here, I somehow need to be able to talk to the cave from this guy. Right? That's it. The only way right now I can get to this room is through the cave. If I'm in this room, I need to talk to the cave to get to that room. Period. That's the only way I can get there. So, how can I make this guy aware of the cave? Who built this room? Who created this first room? Come on, people, it's not vacation yet. Well, I, my picture tells the whole story. Who built this room? Cave. Right here, this line of code. Here I'm in cave. Boom. Cave built that room. See this new room right here. So Cave hunkered down and gave birth to a room. I mean that in the, the grossest way possible. <laughs> Hopefully everybody got a real good visual there. All right. <laughs> See, you can't get this level of entertainment anywhere else. Up here eating jelly beans and pieces of brick. <laughs> Talk about orange juice, burning up bitcoins, and caves giving birth to rooms. Like Tosh 2.0. Funnier, though. I'm funnier than Tosh. You guys overrated. What's up? No. 
No, I'm way funnier than him. I think I'm I'm at least ten times funnier than Tosh. As inappropriate as inappropriate as he is, I will say worse. <laughs> in a heartbeat, in church. They don't have a network kid when you're not killing zombies. When I'm not killing zombies. I don't think Tosh would kill zombies in church. I killed zombies in church while eating pancakes in church. And I went up for seconds after they said don't go up for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're the exception to that rule, always. So you don't know me? Okay, so. The cave created this guy. Who created this guy? That guy. This guy gave birth to this guy. This guy gave birth to this guy and this guy. This guy gave birth to this guy. This guy gave birth to this guy and this guy. And this guy gave birth to nobody. End of the bloodline right here. Okay? So, <coughs> that brick isn't digesting that well here. All right, so, this guy was created from this guy. Who was created from this guy. Who was created from this guy? Who was created from this guy? Who was created from the cave? How can I make this guy aware of the cave? Does this guy know about the cave? This guy's a room. Rooms know about names, exits, and treasure. So this guy doesn't know about the cave, does he? So forget about this guy for a second. How do we make this guy aware of the cave? Just this one. This guy's a room, right? Blue and red boxes are rooms. Big green box is the cave. How do I make this room aware of the cave? How do I give him access to the cave? So that this room can return to the entrance, even though he is the entrance. He doesn't necessarily know that. He doesn't know he's the beginning of the cave. Each of these rooms, they, from their perspective, they might be the beginning of the cave. They don't know what's above them. I mean, right outside the window might be the wood chipper, which is the beginning of all caves. Durr. That was a gummy bear. I like those. Should have got more gummy bears. Somebody can answer this? This is not like a super trick. This is like, we're not even talking about code. We're drawing pictures here, people. If this guy is going on vacation... And he needs his iPod. What does he have to do? How many of you have been on vacation? <laughs> so come on, little children. How, how many of you have been, raise your hands. How many of you have been, been, on, been on vacation? Okay, how many of you have an iPod or another music listening device? How many of you took it with you on vacation? Why did you take it with you? So you'd have access to it when you're on vacation. Right? <laughs> if it's sitting at home and you're on vacation, you can't listen to your music. That's why you took it with you. Okay? If this guy didn't take the cave with him, he can't access the cave. So he's got to take his iPod with him. we got to give this dude the cave. Right? And what does this guy need to do? When he creates this dude, this dude wants to be able to listen to music too. He's got to give him the cave. And this guy's got to give him the cave. This guy's going to give him the cave. And this guy's going to give him the cave. And once he has the cave, what can he do? He could ask the cave, give me the room for the entrance, and he can enter that room. So we're going to change up room. I have a private variable of type cave called the cave. 
in all rooms, take a cave as a parameter. So in order to create a room, we have to pass it the cave that that room's in. And then that room will store as an instance variable the cave. That makes sense? So when we first create our very first room, well, here, I'll come back to that one. That'll be your next trick thing, and there's several people who can't answer that, by the way. So we'll help you raise your hands. When we create these rooms, <clears throat> right here I'm creating a new room when I'm building my exits. To build a, a room, I need to pass it a cave. So I'm going to pass it this dot, the cave. Right? So all rooms, when I build them, I have to pass them the cave. So this room, this guy's a room, and when he builds his exits, he's building new rooms, and each of those rooms he's going to pass on the cave that he received when he was born. Make sense? Now we got to go back to the first room. This guy, the very first room that's created. He, this guy gets created by another room. This guy right here got created by this room. But this guy was created by this cave. Make sense? So if I'm in cave and I'm creating the very first room, I need to pass that room. Well, I need, I need to pass the cave to this room. How do I do that? My current context here is I am in the instance of the cave. I'm building my entrance, which is a room. This room is expecting that I pass it a cave as a parameter. But I'm the cave, right? I'm currently the cave. I'm creating my first room. In order for me to create this room, I need to let him know about me. Because the room's constructor expects me to pass in a cave. So what do I pass in here? How do I give that room access to me? So this, this candy corn, but purple? No, that one was soft. I, I just expected it to be worse. Somebody gonna answer this? We gotta go back to our, our, um, yep. our iPod uh, sample. Oh, I like that one. That was a ball of sugar with sugar all over it. <laughs> okay, we're going to go back to another example. All right, so... Let's say that you're, uh, how many of you have a pet dog? All right, so you're your pet dog. Well, you're not the pet dog. I'm the pet dog. Okay, so I'm your pet dog. And I eat a lot. I feed on jelly beans and crap. Okay. Um, now you're leaving the house. But the dog has decided that you can, well, actually, hold on, let's do it this way. You're leaving the house, but you've decided that you um, want to bring the dog with you. You're going to need the dog later. Okay? A lot of people do that, right? They, they go outside, they, the dog jumps in the car with them, and good to go, right? Okay, so, so Evan here has decided that he's going to bring his dog with him. So what do, you, what, what do you do when you want to bring your dog with you when you leave the house? No, no, that's what you do with the dog. If you're leaving your house and you want the dog to come with you, how do you make that happen? Huh? Okay, so what do you what do you what do you say? Say you say here, boy, here, boy. Right? Okay. okay. Now, when you say that, <laughs> so here, hold on, hold on, right here, right here. So I'm the room. Evan here saying, "Here, boy, here, boy. I need a cave. I need I need my dog." Okay. And what what does the dog do? Okay, so the actual dog. Yes. Okay, so so 
the dog doesn't like do some sort of weird cloning thing or anything like that. So he's in co- so so the dog comes with you. So he probably runs up and he kind of jumps up to you and you kind of carry him out, right? You got to carry the dog out because dog. I'm afraid of sidewalks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be judgy. <laughs> See? Tosh 30.0. Okay, so the dog has to, I have to go with him. So now I notice here that Evan is leaving the house, but he can't leave without me. Right? Why? Because we built him that way. God has created Evan, in Christian worldview. So that Evan can't leave the house without a cape. <laughs> but in this case, my name is the cave. <laughs> I'm the dog, and you've called me the cave. Why did you name the dog the cave? Because he's fat. The dog is fat. <laughs> okay, so anyways. So, Evan, you require the dog in order to leave the house, Right? Well, actually, it's what's weird here is you actually require the dog in order to be born, which is kind of a <laughs> chicken of the egg type thing. But you know, let's just let's just call it leaving the house, okay? So you go here, boy, here, boy, and what do I do? I have to I have to come up. I jump up on you, and you gotta like piggyback me out there, right? A man was crushed by a dog. <laughs> <laughs> How much can you lift? Can you can you carry three hundred fifty pounds? Oh, really? Very long, at least. How many of you? How many, how many of you become the new dog owner? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a group pet. Uh, <laughs> I can't even ride a Segway. They're I would pass the weight limit. After you, I would have to use one of the the one that they made specially for Shaq. They made a heavier weight limit one for Shaq. Um, with monster truck tires on it, it'd be awesome. Uh, okay, so. You gotta bring the dog with you in order for you to even leave the house. So the dog runs up and he throws himself at you, right? And you carry the dog out with you. How does the dog how, if if I'm the dog, or in this example I'm the cave, how did I give myself to my owner? What's the equivalent of running up to my owner and handing him my leash in Java? What's, is a leash a link to me? Is that fair enough? Okay. So if I'm going to run up to Evan, I'm going to hand him my leash so he can take me with him. What's the Java syntax for the cave to hand its leash to the room? How does an object refer to itself from within itself? So this keyword. So if I'm the cave and I need to give this room access to me, I will pass it a pointer to me. So this keyword is a pointer to me. Does that make sense? We can prove that. Right here I can say system dot out, dot print lin, this, and when we first create the cave here in driver, the very first thing it should spit out is the value stored in this. And what will the value stored in this be? The memory address of the cave. A pointer to this cave. The cave's leash, if you will. Okay, that makes sense? So the very first room we create, we're going to pass it a link back to this cave. And then each room that that room creates is going to pass those rooms a link back to the cave. Which then finally allows us, inside of prompt, if they enter it in a B, for them to say this dot, the cave dot, get entrance dot, Enter. So get entrance was the method that Amish had us write. 
and our, our, our getter method for our private room entrance, the entrance. Here's the cave that we've passed through all of our rooms. We got the entrance, and now we're going to enter that room, which is the original room. And enter says print out the room, blah, 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 all that other crap. That makes sense? So now we can run this. <coughs> Two rooms, one Bitcoin. Hmm, that just reminded me of something else. Funny. <laughs> I'm so thankful only half the class got that. Okay. So, I've, I've taken one exit, I've collected my only Bitcoin, but I'm going to hit B to go back to the beginning. Back to the beginning. Now, now let me just remind myself, the beginning had no Bitcoin, but the first exit did. When I go back in, now to the room I've already visited, that Bitcoin should be gone, if I correctly picked it up, right? So I'll press zero, no Bitcoin. And I'll hit Q. Oh my gosh, what happened? What happened? I collected one Bitcoin. What did I, what did I do? I broke something inside of, um, oh. Let me make that guy return. So back to uh, Abraham's suggestion, the patriarch. We probably should just put that in else. It will be safer. Then we don't need these returns. Okay. So now, oh, here, 56 rooms, 25 coins. Now we're ready for an adventure. Okay. So we're going to take exit zero. Man, what a crappy cave. So I go right back to the beginning now. Okay, now I'm going to take exit one. Don't want to go to exit zero because you go to exit zero, what happens? You're in the dead end again. So I'll go back to the beginning. Go to exit one. Let's go exit zero. Exit zero. Exit zero. Ha, ah, Bitcoin. But now I'm done. Back to the beginning. Exit one. Exit one. Exit zero. Zero. I got a Bitcoin. Zero. Another Bitcoin. Zero, another Bitcoin, but I'm out of exits. Back to the beginning. One, 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 zero. Oh, oh my, I'm not out of rooms, am I? One, one. I already went this direction. Oh, there, I gotta go that direction. Give me more moves, right? You should be an all or nothing payout. Either you get them all or you don't. Oh, I needed to take that one. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, let's just assume that my memory has now failed me. So I'll hit Q to quit. Collected, I only got 10 of the Bitcoins as I traversed through our cave. It's not bad. I got, like, almost half of them. Five grand. <laughs> five grand of Bitcoins. That's right. <laughs> it took me, like, two minutes. Five grand? How many of you make, make five grand every two minutes? Besides the patriarch. Just printing money. Oh, don't tell me you can't just go outside and pray or send me some cash. Yeah, I mean, heck. You got a, you got kind of a, you got the, like, the red phone. Oh, man, I'm glad this wasn't another two-room cave. Um, okay, <clears throat> so, does that make sense? Now I'm about to throw you a curveball. Everybody ready to be tricked? Evan, ready? 
All right, you're gonna you're the one that has to answer this now. Perfect. You just said you were ready. He's ready. Don't be a baby. Oh. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> For now on, you refer to me as the cave. The <laughs> <laughs> <Your> cave. <laughs> All right. Man, you think a mastiff is big? Maybe we think like 130, 150 pounds. Now I'll shatter your uh, femurs. <laughs> Okay, what am I doing? Oh, tricking you. So right here, that's the way we're passing a cave to our room, right? Okay, yeah, you're not allowed to do that. So rooms can no longer take the cave in as a parameter. Which means that this line no longer will work. So we can no longer enter the beginning of the cave that same way. So back here at our cave, that means that we can't pass ourselves into the room either. Because this doesn't make any sense. When you're creating a room, you don't pass at the cave, right? All right. But, you ready for the, the, this is the requirement, though? It has to work the way it worked before in terms of functionality. So you have to make, give me an alternate solution to giving room access to the cave without passing at the cave when the room is created. Your entire grade is dependent on this. I'm out of jelly beans. <laughs> right. Did I answer right? Yeah, Patriarch? Um, is that the entrance of a static door? So you can then, you can ask the cave to Um, I'm going to say you're getting close. Uh, you can't set it as a static uh, because you'd be setting it from a instance context. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to set a static variable from an instance context. But you're still close. Your thought process is right, just your execution is a little off. You're like in the Olympics, one of those uh, the skaters that tries to do the, the quad and only does like one and a half and it falls in their face and they're like bleeding all over the place. You're that guy. Huh? Well, it works for you, but if you have multiple caves, is the is the issue. If you have multiple caves, they don't have the same entrance. I remember when I was younger in the Olympics, none of them did quads. I remember when it was like impressive, people were doing like triple toe loops and stuff. And all of a sudden people started doing quads, and now it's like if you don't have a quad in your routine, you're you're not gonna win the gold. So when are they going to start doing quintuple ones? You did have that one dude who used to do backflips. Is that uh, Ham Hammond? I don't remember his name. He won a gold medal, but he, he used to, one of his moves was a backflip on ice. Nobody does backflips anymore. Doesn't that seem more impressive than a quad? You do a backflip on the ice and you land on your head, you're dead. The Iron Lotus. Like two people got that reference? Who did get that reference? Was it even two? Two and a half? Three? Three and a half. So you got to see that movie. Blades of Glory? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I was half certain about that reference. <laughs> They decided they had to do the uh, the special moves from pair skating called the Iron Lotus, where one of the guys throws the other one in the air and then does this like weird like uh, can almost like, slice his head off. Yeah, like does this weird uh, 
like roundhouse kick with the blade of the skate where it just barely misses their throat and he catches them. And I guess they, it was invented behind the Iron Curtain in, the, in North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> so they're practicing it. And uh, Will Ferrell's the guy who's going to be the one who throws them and then does the spin. And so he's practicing it over and over again. He just keeps decapitating these, uh, these, these practice dummies. Like over and over again. Just like you just see heads all over the place in this. So like a hundred percent right, he's decapitating these things. And you see the coach is over there just sharpening the heck out of the skates, just make sure they're really <laughs> And then they decide he's good to go once they practice it live. After he never did it without decapitating a dummy. Bet you don't know what the special move they did at the end. I totally pulled it off. Now you have to go see that movie, because since I just explained part of it, it's, it's open game for the final. So, somebody got a better answer for me? We're going to say that the uh, Patriarch's close. Something to do with a static context. Could you put in uh, stats? I think that would be a pretty good idea. I mean, heck, we're using stats for everything else. We're keeping track of treasures in there. We're keeping track of the number of rooms. Heck, why can't we put the cave in there? So can't we do this? Can't stats have a private static cave, the cave? And this guy will have a public. Here, we'll start the cave off as null because we don't have a cave yet. Then we'll have a public static cave get cave. And this guy will return the cave. We'll also have a public static void set cave that takes a cave. C is a parameter. And we'll say the cave. We'll see. Then what we do is when we first create the cave, we say stats dot set cave to this. And then inside of room, when we decide to go back to the beginning, we say stats dot get cave dot get entrance dot enter. Does that seem easier than passing the cave around to all these different objects? Just throw it up in one central location. So this guy right here, what does he do? He just reaches out the window, grabs the cave. Good to go. That makes sense? So, this will work. Now, okay, in, in Patriarch's defense, writing it this way, we can only have one cave at a time as well. So, really, your, your other solution is more confusing, but at, from a... Um, an efficiency perspective as good. But you're still wrong. One room, zero but What kind of crap cave is this? So here, we'll still go back to the main entrance. Look at this. We're going in loops. Actually, this is more sci-fi. So it's, I literally, when, I, when I'm here, I opened up a portal back to the main room. By by uh, talking to this uh, voice in my head called Stats. It said, please give me the cave. And portal open. Uh, I don't know why you guys got to make it weird. Um, okay. That makes sense? Here, I'll run it again so we can prove we have real room. Oh, 119 rooms, 67 bitcoins. You never finish this puzzle. Here, we'll go down a couple of levels. Okay. Well, don't, don't don't take an exit that doesn't exist. 
Remember I said you can assume we have perfect input? That might have been a bad assumption. Oh my gosh. Oh, come on, number of rooms one? No, that's better than nothing. Here. So go zero, 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 stop. Go back to the entrance. Now we're back to the entrance, so we can go to zero, zero, one, blah, blah, blah. And eventually we can quit. We've got three Bitcoins. Make sense? Now, ready for the last trick before Easter break? If you get this one right, you won't have homework over break. So Evan, it's all on you. <laughs> right now I've written inside of stats, set cave, to take a cave C as a parameter. But instead of calling it C, I want to call it the cave. Which cave am I setting to which? A variable resolves to its most local definition, right? So the cave here resolves to this guy. This cave resolves to this guy. But I ultimately want to set this guy, correct? That's the guy I want to set to uh, this guy. How do I fix this? As a reminder, if we, if we come into cave here, uh, actually let's do it for, um, let's do it for room. Let's just say room took in a string called name as a parameter. I would say this dot name is equal to name. That's how I'd set it, right? Okay. So how would I do this in stats? Remember, I'm tricking you. Don't cheat. Don't cheat. You're going to screw the entire class over right here. So here's the method called set cave. Takes a cave as a parameter. How do I fix this so it says the right thing? Who told you that? You bought a graphic. You what? <laughs> How do you know he bought a graphics card? Does he show you in the checkout? So you want to say stats dot the cave equals the cave. How many people think he's right? Your entire grade is based on this. Your opinion here. Jake's got his hand up, so I mean I'd probably go with that. <laughs> so. This is all coming from a static instant, a static context, correct? If we are in an instance context, we would say this dot. Since these are static variables, they're owned by the class. How do we call a static field? Using the name of the class in which the field is defined. So to set this guy up here, we say stats dot the cave. We want to set that equal to the cave, which will resolve to its most local definition. We'll see that still work. Oh, no exits. We'll just go back. All right. Make sense? Questions, comments, concerns, bribes. All right. Have a good Easter break. Traveling somewhere, drive safe, fly safe, whatever. Mm -hmm.